This is the Umi DG G1. It is an entry level device with a decently sized screen, a large battery and no ads. Now I'm emphasizing on the fact that it's an entry level device so we can keep our expectations realistic. It has a couple of advantages, but I would not recommend this device for most people. Here is why I said so. The build quality of the G1 is very similar to that of the A13 Pro, which I reviewed a couple of months ago. It has the same flattened sides and gradient finish on the back and even the same camera arrangement pattern. It also has the text Beyond Dreams and the Umi DG branding on the back as well. The USB-C port is on the bottom alongside the microphone ports and a speaker grill. And at the top, you have the headphone jack and another microphone port. On the left side, you only have the SIM card tray and on the right side, you have your power button and volume buttons. There is no fingerprint scanner on this device and it's not really like I expected one because it only costs about $110 or about 50,000 Naira if you are using the official exchange rate. Moving on to the display, the Umi DG G1 comes with a 6.52 inch 720x1600 IPS TFT panel. Now in case all of that sounds like jargon to you, just know that this is not the sharpest display and the colors are not very accurate. It's not like it's unusable. Of course, you can still watch your videos and and read your text or documents on this display, but just know that it is not going to give you the sharpest quality or the best colors, especially if you're watching videos on Netflix or YouTube. And another thing to keep in mind if you plan on consuming content on this device is the fact that it only has a single downward firing speaker, which is located here. Now, the problem with it is that even though it does get decently loud, it does not really feel or sound as rich as the speaker quality you would get on higher end devices. It sounds a bit tinny and voices may come out a bit distorted. Don't stay sober. Hey, fly is a jet, but with no layovers. With no layovers. I am. Well, today I've got some of the very best headphones you can get for a price point that will make your wallet smile. So for the best audio experience on this device, make sure you connect your headphones using the 3.5 millimeter port or you connect your Bluetooth earbuds or headphones. With regards to performance, this device comes with the MediaTek MT6739, which is a quad core chipset. It only clocks up to 1.5 gigahertz, which is not very fast at all. Day-to-day -day activities like scrolling through social media or just reading articles online and things like that are not necessarily the smoothest experience, and that isn't even helped by the fact that the display is only 60 hertz. But like I said, for this price point, we need to have very realistic expectations. Gaming on this device was actually surprisingly okay, depending on the type of game you are playing. I would not recommend anyone to try to play any graphically intensive 3D games like Call of Duty Mobile on this device. But if you're playing something simple like Score Hero or Beach Buggy Racing, then the device should handle it quite okay. One thing which is quite poor on this device, however, is multitasking. The apps that you keep in the background are refreshed very quickly because this device only comes with two gigabytes of RAM, which is quite disappointing seeing as we're in 2022, and I would expect that all devices, regardless of price point, should have at least four gigabytes of RAM. So this is something you have to keep in mind if you plan on buying this device. As for storage, it only comes with 32 gigabytes of internal storage, so you have to be careful what you're keeping on the phone unless you're going to purchase an external SD card. The device comes with Android 12 Go, which is a version of Android 12 made for low budget devices that don't have the processing power to handle the full version of Android. To get the best out of this device, you're most likely going to have to install light apps like Instagram Lights, TikTok Lights, and Facebook Lights, as the full versions of these apps will be heavy and will occupy a lot of your storage very quickly. One positive side of the Umi DG G1 is the fact that it has a 5150 milliamp hour battery, so this device can last you well over a day and probably well into the second day, depending on your use case. Unfortunately, it doesn't have fast charging, so you're going to have to be patient when you are juicing this device up. And now let's talk about the cameras on the Umi DG G1. They are pretty much what you would expect for a budget or an entry level device. And I would not recommend getting this device if you want to take decent photos. There is a lot of shutter lag. The processing takes a long time. You need to hold your phone very steadily in order for there not to be, you know, a lot of motion or blurry pictures. You know what? I will just show you some samples of pictures that were taken on this device. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
said we drunk in the spirit, no, we don't stay sober. We don't stay sober. Hey, fly as a jet, but with no layovers. With no layovers. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, look, we finna break boulders. Hey, we finna break boulders. Yeah, yeah. Cause this a takeover. Hey, this a takeover. Uh-huh. Yeah, now what's the plan? What happened? I feel like Jackie Chan, man. I'm all about the action. This device comes with a 13 megapixel main sensor and a 2 megapixel macro sensor. Now take that 2 megapixel macro sensor and just throw it away because you're not getting any sensible or good quality photos from there. I think it was just put on this device to occupy space and make you think you actually have two different cameras. As for the 13 megapixel main sensor, it is meh. I mean, you saw all the pictures already, so I don't even have to go into that too much. Now, with regards to the selfie camera, you have a 5 megapixel selfie camera here, and I will give you um, a sample of the quality that you can expect to get from this selfie camera. Now, mind you, the environment here is actually pretty decently lit. I have a very big soft box right here above my head, so the lighting should be okay, and hopefully the selfie will be good as well let me see e, well i mean i've seen worse i don't like the fact that there's a watermark at the bottom but it's not the worst thing out there as for videos both the front and rear cameras can record at a maximum of 1080p 30 frames per second so I don't think you're going to be shooting any cinematic videos or movie like videos with this device. In fact, let me just give you a test or a sample of the selfie video and microphone quality on this um, device. So let's see here. This is the front facing camera quality of the Umi DG G1. I, okay, I'll just move it over to this side so the lighting is a bit more even. I don't think it's that bad. I mean, I think it uh, could be better, but from what I can see in the preview, it looks decently sharp, but I don't know how it's going to look after it has been processed. Now, there is no optical image stabilization on the front camera, neither on the uh, rear camera, so you're not going to want to move the phone around while you are recording. You want it to be as stable as possible. But let me know what you think about the video quality and the audio quality in the comment section right below the like button. I actually got tired of seeing myself, you know, with the selfie camera of that device. So like I was saying, if you've been enjoying the video this far, then a sub to the channel would be amazing. So with everything you've heard so far, I'm sure I don't need to tell you that this device is not for everyone. It is very suitable if you want to give this to a kid, maybe in, you know, their first couple of years of high school or to an elderly parent or grandparent, or you just want to use this as your secondary device when you go out so the police don't see your main device and think you are a Yahoo boy or a Yahoo girl. This only applies to people in Nigeria anyway. But yeah, those are um, some of the use cases that you can use this device for. Now, just because this entry-level device isn't necessarily great quality, that doesn't mean that Umi DG can't make better value phones or can't make higher quality phones. As a matter of fact, I made a review of the Umi DG A13 Pro and you can check that out right here. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Thai Hey, yeah. Said we drunk in the spirit, no we don't stay sober. We don't stay sober. Hey, fly as a jet but with no layovers. With no layovers. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah.